Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 451. Written by Pepper Antique. All right everybody. Margaret Choi said in a sing-song voice as she carried her two grandchildren. Follow the kind people in the green robes okay. Hold on to each other's hands. Around her the healers from the ward, mainly the youngest and least experienced of them, were guiding the children out of the room. Babies were being carried, or having their carriers pushed along on the lightly levitating beds in groups of six to eight. A small contingent of the royal guards were waiting outside to escort them to the new gate near the Earth Embassy. The children, and the handful of pregnant mothers that were already being wheeled out ahead of them, were being given priority on transiting to Earth. She wasn't surprised when she exited the room and saw Amina leading the guards. The two of them exchanged nods as they saw each other, and Mrs. Choi could see the redness around her daughter-in-law's eyes as she took up her position leading the group. All right move out. She commanded the security detail as they began moving forward. Let's get these little ones to safety. Nobody stops us for anything. The guards all nodded as they began marching in a tight cordon around the group. More than a few of them held out their hands to the little children as they reached up to the soldiers, who many of the children thought of the same way earth children thought of firefighters, or police officers, or soldiers. Elixon grunted in pain as he faded in and out of consciousness while leaning against a tree that had been knocked over by one of the shock waves. His skin was laced across his entire body with black veins and that was on top of the myriad burns that covered him anywhere his skin was exposed, and most of the places where it wasn't as well. Several yards away Via lay on his back, his arms curled in in front of his chest like a dead spider as he struggled to breath. The orange light that had glowed off of him with radiating heat pulsed in and out as the magic of his country's faith waned. He was too far from the door that he'd come through. And, unbeknownst to him, the priest that had been stationed there had been pushed out of the way by the rushing throngs of his citizens as they fled their country to Petravius, where they had heard there was a chance at salvation. Elixon was fairly certain that the emperor was dying, though it was hard to tell. The diminutive man had channeled more energy through himself from his people than most people might channel in an entire lifetime. That power had made him a borderline demigod as he'd flown alongside the crown prince in their attempt to slow the asteroid they'd thrown Glag at and then to destroy the others after that. The Glag plan had, to the best of Elixon's knowledge, failed. He didn't know why. Glag should have been more than capable of devouring the mass of space rock. But something had gone wrong. Maybe it being from outside the planet made it different despite Elixon's magical senses saying it was just rock and metal and ice. Maybe they'd thrown the poor elemental too hard, cracking him like James had in the arena months ago. Or maybe they just hadn't slowed the asteroid down enough to give him the time he needed. They'd had to let go of the asteroid in an attempt to get away from the, admittedly smaller, impact so they could survive. Either way it didn't seem to matter now. He could see the last few asteroids flying down in the distance. None were going to impact close enough to hit him or the emperor. But they'd still get battered by the ensuing shock waves and quakes. One of those quakes was happening even now. The ground rumbled beneath their barely conscious bodies as they sat there, struggling to even breath. You know, old friend. He said as he shifted from the tree behind him, causing him to fall a bit. I miss your singing. And it was true. He'd never said it to the young emperor because he knew how much the loss had hurt him all those years ago. Via twitched, his head turning a bit to look at Elixon. One of his eyes was sealed shut by swelling and blood from his forehead. He didn't have the energy to use his magical speech, written or through the air, but he weakly used his signs. He knew Elixon didn't understand the signs, but it wasn't like that mattered anymore. I don't. He said, grimacing as his arms protested the motions. As much as it hurt. The truth was important to know. He rolled back over and looked back up at the sky, which was still hard to comprehend. I do miss my parents though. Elixon nodded, despite not understanding. The rumbling around them grew louder. See them soon, I imagine. Via signed as one of his legs began to tremble, though he couldn't tell. Elixon was ready to pass out when he noticed a shadow form over the both of them as the rumbling seemed to almost be centered on their location now. He looked up, expecting to see one last asteroid heading right for them. He hoped it would just get things over with quickly. 
Instead, he saw a massive column of stone that was at least a hundred meters in diameter, and several hundred meters tall, and that seemed to be growing still. It bent down toward them and Elixon felt a surge of energy, despite his body's protests, as he realized what it was. Two large, black orbs cracked open and peered down at them with childlike wonder. Then a fissure opened below them. It was oddly angled at first, but then shifted until it was where it was supposed to be. The massive structure wasn't the sandstone that Elixon was used to. Instead it was an odd mishmash of different colored stone and bits of earth. Parts of it seemed to glint with metal flecks that had odd lines on them. The world seemed to vibrate as Glag spoke his first words in the new form. And to Elixon's amazement, his vocabulary had seemed to expand, albeit only barely. It would certainly seem so. Elixon said with eyes wide. Via looked at the massive elemental with similar amazement. And then the lower portion of Glag's new form split into a pair of legs that would put even the tallest of trees to shame. And the ground around them rumbled and bounced so hard that it actually began to make the two of them move around in a chaotic pattern, hurting their already injured bodies. Glag began to run toward the nearest asteroid he could see. And each step covered nearly a mile. James slowed as he sensed the emptiness in front of him and saw the vague outline of what was approaching him. When it sp no, when he spoke, James corrected himself, he sounded like Joey. It wasn't right. It sounded like it was being run through some kind of sound processor. It sounded like Joey's voice was being layered over itself over and over again at different tones and pitches. JJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJ
only Joey was holding it back now. James looked on in awe and confusion as he saw a dull glow emanate from what would be Joey's chest. Nnnnnnnuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
I like, I I it was, made, for you. Then he felt another hand on his other shoulder. A different, though instantly recognizable, voice rang out in his left ear. James Michael Choi. You beautifully reckless maniac. James's eyes widened even further. You have a defiant soul. And James who had, ever since he'd figured it out, had a knack of drawing in energy in ways that even v and Elixin had been impressed by, began to do exactly that. Fuck you defiance. You fucking buddy fucker. He thought as he saw the cleanser's face shift to one of fear. Ha ha ha. Defiance laughed. Classic. And his eyes welled with tears as he saw that same light finally die out in his little brother's chest. Do it you motherfucker. He yelled into the face of the cleanser. Tendrils snaked around its body and began impaling and covering James. James's chest began to glow with a light that would have put Via Vartaris's religious empowerment to shame. And the different souls and powers and bodies began to merge even further as James's body sank fully into that of the cleanser. As they did the entire world, and all the gods watching its universe, heard the scream that James a Joey a defiance, the cleanser began to bellow. Of all the gods that could possibly interfere, the least likely of them to do so broke the mold and did exactly that. Life reached into the mayhem of her opposite's creation and plucked a single soul from the amalgamation. A soul that was no longer needed for what was about to happen, and had more than earned some rest. It was a miracle really that it was even still in existence. As she rested back into their thought space, the small, dim, exhausted, little light resting in her hand. She looked over at Death, who looked like he'd spent ten rounds in a boxing ring despite his office worker uniform. Death smiled at her, then looked over at the other gods, who were, minus defiance, looking at them in confusion. He reached up and the mercurial floor of their shared space, and the galaxy-like ceiling, began to darken and grow malevolent in nature. Several of the gods who weren't tied to this space by the cleanser's actions, tried to run to different universes to escape but found their attempts to do so thwarted by whatever was happening. Oh how he hated them. How he hated them and their stupid, petty little games that they played with the mortals. He always had. Death grinned maniacally as he saw the, novel to them, fear on their faces. Then the end began.